Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Slows Wrestling Show, your source for all things wrestling and sports entertainment. Live from Palm Harbor, Florida, coming up, Howard Finkel passes away, WWE Raw results, AEW Dynamite results, Samoa Joe injury update, WWE Money in the Bank, WWE makes TV change, WWE announcers released, AJ Styles unhappy with Gallows and Anderson's release, list of NXT talent released, MJF reveals he might need surgery, and more on the Slows Wrestling Show. Welcome back to the Slows Wrestling Show, your source for all things wrestling and sports entertainment. Thursday last week, Howard Finkel, the legendary WWE ring announcer, passed away at 69 years old. So Howard's health had been declining for over the past year, and it's a really sad thing to hear about because Howard changed people's lives because of how good of an influence he was doing ring announcing and he really paved the landscape for many generations in the wrestling business. And he will be remembered for his kindness and just a generous person he was. So I myself will miss this legendary ring announcer, Howard Finkel, because of what he did throughout his career. And no one will ever forget how he helped change the business and make the business what it is today. Now here are the WWE Raw results. Alistair Black defeated Austin Theory via pinfall to qualify for the Money in the Bank. Shayna Baszler defeated Andy Hartwell via stoppage. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander defeated Shane Thorne and Brendan Vink via pinfall. Nia Jax defeated Kyrie Sane via pinfall. Apollo Crews defeated MVP via pinfall to qualify for the Money in the Bank. Liv Morgan defeated Ruby Riot via pinfall. Rey Mysterio defeated Murphy via pinfall to qualify for the Money in the Bank. Charlotte Flair defeated Caden Carter via submission. Andrade defeated Akira Dezawa via pinfall. Bianca Blair defeated Santana Garrett via pinfall. And Drew McIntyre defeated Angel Garza via pinfall. Now here are the AEW Dynamite results. Darby Allin defeated Sammy Guevara to advance in the TNT Championship Tournament. Kenny Omega defeated Allen Angels. Orange Cassidy defeated Jimmy Havoc. Wardlow defeated Lee Johnson. Brody Lee defeated Justin Law. And Dustin Rhodes defeated Kip Sabian to advance in the TNT Championship Tournament. Now here's an update on Samoa Joe. According to WrestlingNews.co, back in January, Samoa Joe suffered a head injury during a Monday Night Raw show. Samoa Joe has not been cleared from his latest concussion. So when it comes to wrestling injuries, the performer could be out for weeks or a longer period of time, depending on the injury, and hopefully soon, Joe will be cleared for in-ring competition depending on the time frame that he is required to recover. So for WWE fans, we will have to wait for further information. Now, according to WrestlingNews.co, the Money in the Bank card has been decided. Here's what's been confirmed. Drew McIntyre vs. Seth Rollins for the WWE title. Braun Strowman vs. Bray Wyatt for the Universal title. Street Profits vs. the Viking Raiders for the Raw Tag Team titles. Miz and Morrison vs. the Usos vs. the New Day for the SmackDown Tag Team titles. Bayley vs. Tamina for the SmackDown Women's title. And Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss vs. Dana Brooke and Carmella for the WWE Women's Tag Team titles. Now, according to more information coming from WrestlingNews.co, WWE has made big changes to their TV schedule on how they will hold television events. Vince McMahon has decided to air shows live each week, and WWE will plan the shows to file them in advance over the next few months. Here's the schedule for taped events. This goes from Saturday, April 25th, all the way to Wednesday, July 1st. So I think WWE is doing the right thing, planning shows in advance to limit travel for wrestlers. And I think it's a smart idea to have two episodes a day 
so that the WWE picks up on viewership. And that is where WWE is struggling the most right now. And if they want to pick up their ratings, they are going to have to find something within a storyline that will keep people glued to their TVs in some way. Otherwise, ratings will continue to plummet. Now, according to eWrestling News, WWE has released two announcers. These include John Cuesto and Kathy Campanelli. So it's sad to see the list of people that were released, and for many it's had some type of effect on them. Hopefully these announcers will find a different job for them, as much as it sucks for people who, who have been released from the company. And once wrestling gets back to where it needs to be, we as a wrestling community will be united. And that I truly fully believe, and everything will eventually work out. Now, according to WrestlingNews.co, AJ Styles is unhappy with the release of Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson. So I believe AJ has every right to be unhappy with WWE's decision because these two wrestling stars have been busting their butts for the past year. But at the same time, he feels responsible for their release because he feels he didn't take care of them as friends and as a team. And that has to really be hard for AJ. And also for the rest of the people that were released. But I'm hoping that Gallows and Anderson will find work within another company soon. Now here's the list of released NXT talent according to Wrestling Inc. Rocky, Mohamed Fahim, Marcos Gomes, Faisal Kurdi, Edgar Lopez, Hasin Adegal, Cassis Ono, Tino Sabatelli, Cesar Bonani, Mars Wang, Tanera Conti, Nick Ogarelli, Alyssa Monero, Marino, Dan Matha, MJ Jenkins, Deanna Peruzzo, and Alexander Jastic. So I'm absolutely stunned to see that Cassis Oh No has been released because I thought WWE would, I thought Cassis Oh No would be the last person that WWE would even think of releasing because of what he's done for NXT and training upcoming stars at the Performance Center. And hopefully there's a light at the end of the tunnel for Cassis Ono because he's an extremely talented man from past matches I've seen. So I hope the best for him and I really look forward to seeing where his future leads for him in his wrestling career. Now, according to High Risk Maneuver on Instagram, MJF revealed he might need surgery. If this happens, this could prolong MJF's AEW career for a while and that I hope that isn't the case because hopefully he will still be able to compete in the ring because he is one of my favorite heels in the company right now. And I love seeing Cody and MJF go to work on each other because I look forward to seeing more of that for sure in the future. It's one of the few storylines that has me locked into AEW because of how very well put together these matches and angles are. But I'm sure hoping MJF doesn't have to have surgery but if he does, hopefully he won't be out too long. I will take a break, but when we come back, the monarch of manliness, Fabu Andre, joins the Slows Wrestling Show to talk about his AEW experience. Jim Ross wants Rusev to join AEW. Carl Anderson hyped up New Japan Return. Money in the Bank setup. CM Punk says The Fiend Bray Wyatt vs. Braun Strowman is too early. Seth Rollins upset about WWE negativity and more on the Slows Wrestling Show. Welcome back to the Slows Wrestling Show, your source for all things wrestling and sports entertainment. So in this interview with the Monarch of Manliness, Fabu Andre, I talked about his AEW debut and match. I asked him how this all came about for him and he told me that he got a phone call on his way up to Jacksonville and got an opportunity to be on All Elite Wrestling through that. So then I went on to ask Fabio about his experience at All Elite Wrestling and he told me that it was really cool 
to perform on national television. At first, he was really nervous, but once he got into it, it, it was really cool. And he found out before the match that he was going to take a kick and a DDT from John Moxley in the match, and that's how the match would end. And he, after his match, he got to talk with John Moxley, which must have been a really cool moment for him to be able to stand in front of somebody who has really become the face of the wrestling world and really has gotten the fans over and on his side, which is really cool. And that must have been amazing for him. Then I went on to ask Fabu Andre about Chico Adams and Tony Donati, who also made an impact on All Elite Wrestling and asked him what he thought about them being on the show and being able to compete compete in front of a live audience and in front of national television. And he told me he was really, really excited and happy for them and that they got the opportunity to compete in front of a TV audience, which is really cool for them. And I'm really happy for Chico and Tony as well because I know them as much as Fabu Andre and it's so cool to see people move up on a ladder like that and hopefully we will see them again in all elite wrestling in the future then i went on to ask fabu andre if any other promotions have reached out to him after his appearance on all elite wrestling and he said since with the government shutdown and with the pandemic going on that's kind of hard so not 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 many promotions have been able to contact him and he hasn't been able to get out to as many people because of this and what's going on in the world right now and that really sucks and hopefully things will pick back up very very soon and hopefully fabu will be able to get out to different promotions throughout the country then i asked fabu lastly what his next move in professional wrestling will be and if we will see different sides of fabu that we haven't seen yet and he told me that currently he is working on different angles of his character different sides and just trying to improvise and apply different things to his character so i'm looking forward to it man i am excited to see what how everything turns out and ladies and gentlemen if you want to be sure to follow fabu andre on twitter at fabu andre to see everything going on in his wrestling career and follow at wwn acw and at all elite wrestling to see all their top notch shows now, according to Wrestling Republic News on Instagram, Carl Anderson has released a video hyping up a New Japan return. So I really look forward to seeing Carl Anderson back on New Japan Pro Wrestling because I haven't seen him perform for New Japan, but just glimpses of old matches and stuff. And I would like to see him reunite with the Bullet Club or join Chaos. It just depends on what direction New Japan would want to go with him. For sure. Now, according to Heel vs. Face on Instagram, CM Punk says The Fiend vs. Strowman is too early. So I agree with CM Punk on this because I feel this feud could be pushed back to a later time where a live crowd could see the feud unfold and understand the story from a personal perspective. I feel that if WWE waits, they will have a better way of projecting this feud and a lot of fans will hype get the hype will hype it up it'll be a great story and it will draw a lot of attention so if wwe does wait then it will work out for them in the end now according to high risk maneuver non-compete clauses were attached to recent superstar releases the main roster got a 90 day non-release clause and nxt got 30 day non-compete clauses this means that former NXT and main roster wrestlers can't compete for a different company until the release clauses are up. And I think this is one of WWE's policies and that once those are up, we could see many of these stars going to different companies for sure. But I see big names going to either AEW, Impact, New Japan, or MLW, MLW in the future. Now, according to High Risk Maneuver, WWE will be bringing back cinematic matches for Money in the Bank. I think this is a very good decision from WWE because The Undertaker's cinematic match and the Funhouse match did so well. 
And I feel like WWE should stick with this direction and concept of planning matches because fans seem to really like it. And so far, they do. And WWE has done a fantastic job with these matches. So all I can really say is that they have to keep doing what they have been doing for the fans for sure. Now, according to High Risk Maneuver, The Undertaker explained his new character evolution. When AJ threw that first stone and made this personal, then made it into a no-brainer, I couldn't say that mainstream Undertaker and be able to respond and deal with the things he was saying in that character. A lot of people were curious. What is the Unholy Trinity? Well, the Unholy Trinity that I referenced was the Dead Man, the American Badass, and the man himself, Mark Calloway, and I put them all together. My brain was working that way, it was a unification for, of all three of these entities into one person. So I like this idea of the unholy, unholy Trinity being the American Badass, the Dead Man, and Mark Calloway being put all together. And I think it will spawn great WWE cinematic matches if done very well. So I'm all for this idea for sure, for all three of the entities having roles and a story behind them. And I think it will work out for sure. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Please be sure to follow the show on Twitter at ShowsSlows and check out the Facebook page and take a look at my website, SlowsHQTV.Weebly.com. From Palm Harbor, Florida, I'm Alex Slows saying goodbye for now. Have a good evening, everybody.